but I knew this guy was going to be good. Something deep down said Avery Fitzmorris is going to be the man, and he's leading in rookie scoring. So last year, we finished with a record of 28, 43, and 11 for 67 points. And this guy let me know that it was the exact same record as the Senators in 2017, 2018. It's kind of cool. Fun fact. What's going on, guys? And welcome back to your Ottawa Senators franchise mode for NHL 19. Here we are, start of year number three, just about to head into the preseason. Now, we got to do some adjusting for the lines, get some of those prospects in there from our pretty successful draft in year number two. Now, we got screwed in the draft lottery because, of course, we did. This team is cursed, but we ended up making the best of it, and I was a little bit nervous about our first overall pick but look at this guy 75 overall Lucas Hirsch now he's a exact top four that's good medium top four we know that um, currently listed as a minor top two now when we drafted him he was 17 years old so I was a little bit concerned that he's gonna be a two three four year project but he's actually 75 overall and that's three bars on the binoculars so it's pretty accurate which is awesome taking a defenseman in the top 10 I'm pretty pumped on this guy 75 overall my plan for this guy is play him in the AHL this year bring him up next year and then he's gonna be elite in three or four years which is awesome Lucas Hirsch all right so this year we have two first round picks I really wouldn't mind going after one of those top forwards but it's okay we got lots of time again no rushing we're all good we don't need to worry about this so Lucas Hirsch we're gonna put him in the preseason there he is and everything else stays the same Jacob Bernard Docker. Now I'm trying to bring up more players, but for some reason it's not letting me in the preseason. Last year it was totally fine, but if I try to send down guys like uh, Mark Stone, Jeff Skinner, Thomas Hurdle, we don't need to play those guys in the preseason really. But there's a problem with our cap space. I would like to bring up guys that I don't know about, like Kostitsin, maybe like I want to bring up Ryan Merkley, I want to bring up this low elite guy that we got, even Drake Batherson. I can't bring them up because of the cap situation even if I just try to call them up it won't let me do that either so again am I missing something it happened last year it let me do it last year but maybe it's because we had Marion Gabrick and we had um we had guys like Clark MacArthur who had taken up a lot of cap so I could send those guys down and free up cap space for our NHL roster. So I can't really call up anyone else. Even if I try to send a guy like Thomas Yurko down and I try to bring up a guy like Johnny Tyconic, it's just not going to let me, which is really, really annoying. Now, maybe there's an easier way to get around this, but it's not letting me, which is super annoying because I want to try out this goalie. Like, even if I was just to try to send down Andrew Hammond, right? And I want to bring up um, that goalie, Burroughs, who is medium elite, which is awesome. We got him in the fourth round. Yeah, right. 97th overall. Connor McDavid style. He's medium elite, which is awesome. I want to bring him up. It's not going to let me, which really, really sucks. So I'm not super sure what's going to happen. But we got a few players up. We got Sturgeon and we got, uh, we got Lucas Hirsch, which is totally fine. That's those are kind of the two main guys that I want to uh, that I want to get up in the NHL. Maybe get some uh, get some sort of experience here. Looks like we already have an idea of what Shorgan's looking like. And is it Shorgan? I'm pretty sure it's. Jorgen. S J O G R E N. Jorgen. We're going to go with Jorgen. Nicholas Jorgen. Now there's some concern about Ryan Dezingle. And we, now we got a comment here. It's not a popular one. It says William Carlson gets 81 points and you could have traded him for 40.79 overall Ryan Dezingle. Yes, I feel ya. Trust me, I feel ya. But the Vegas Golden Knights were a top five team last year. He wouldn't have got maybe even close to 70 points, maybe even 60 points if he had been playing on our team. So you gotta weigh out all the options. Yeah, he's a fancy name, he's a fun name. But why are we acquiring a guy like William Carlson when we have guys like Thomas Hurdle who had 70 points on the first line last year? I don't need William Carlson. I think it's gonna be a debate in the comments for a long time. I don't need William Carlson. Yeah, maybe it would have been okay to offload a guy like Ryan Dezingle who has really dropped. I wasn't expecting him to drop that much, but regardless, he did. 
But anyways, it's over. It's in the past. I'm happy with our team. I'm happy. I mean, I'm happy-ish. I wish we could have got Tyson Berry in free agency, but regardless, we're here now. It's all good. Let's get the preseason underway, and then I got a comment that's going to talk about the lines, and I think it's kind of where we should go. So let's see how our team does in the preseason. We got a few rookies up here. I'd like to bring up more, but for some reason, the game is like, no. I don't understand what I'm doing wrong because usually it works works for me to send players down. I thought in uh, the preseason salary cap doesn't count. Again, maybe I'm completely wrong. Maybe I got everything bass backwards here. Maybe I'm completely getting it all wrong, but I thought that's how it was. And we're one in three in the postseason. Bobby Ryan, the $7 million man, leading the way in points. What a beast. He's got four points in four games. Now my expectations for this year are push, not I guess not push for a playoff spot, but I'd like to push for a playoff spot. We're going into year number three, but I also wouldn't mind having another year where we get a decent pick. Not saying I completely want to tank because that's not what I want to do. We have two first round picks this year, which is pretty awesome. So we can afford to, you know, maybe have two mid round picks and then we can maybe move up in the draft to select in the top five because we really need a star forward here. So let me get the lines all ready to go. We finished up four and three in the preseason. We have a somewhat better idea of our players. We're gonna send the majority of them down. Like obviously no one's gonna make it out of camp like Sjorgen or maybe even like Jacob Bernard Docker. He's still listed as a minor top six. He's not quite ready. Lucas Hirsch, minor top two. He's probably going to be ready for next year. But as of right now, these guys aren't ready to go. Let's go ahead and send them down and then we will get the year started. We're also going to look at some prospects for this year. So we got a little bit to do in this video. It looks like I'm having another one of those situations where I can't send them down because I, it would have me being under the cap and I can't call anyone up because no one's making any money. So do I have to just go sign a player to a big contract? Like there's gotta be a way to get around this. It's so stupid. It's so dumb, these moves, blah, blah, blah. So I can't do anything. I'm literally stuck with these guys on my team. Unless I go give a guy a big contract because I'm under the cap, seriously? That just seems so silly. I guess we'll do what we did in Seattle. We gave Tyler Bozak that little retirement contract. Uh, Five million bucks for one year for Alish Hemsky. I guess I have to get over that cap floor. I guess it makes sense, but it's kind of silly. So let's get a uh, couple days. Okay, so good. I have a few days to work with here. So I don't think Hemsky should take too long to accept that. Please don't. Come on. Do not let me, oh my God, I seriously have to start the year with this rookie roster? Come on, game. There has to be a way to make this work. If I go best lines here, it puts pretty much everyone everyone where I need them to be. I just need to send players down. So anyways, we got a comment here from Nick. He says the line should be as follows. Skinner, Hurdle, and then Mark Stone. Love it. That's a great first line. Second line should be Kachuk. White and Timo Meyer. Perfect. We love it. And then we got Ryan Brown and Andreas Janssen. It was a great waiver pickup for us. Slapic, Paul, and Yurko. So he thinks I should trade Ryan Dezingle. He says trade Dezingle for a D man because his role is more of third like. So is Johnson, and Johnson is younger. And by the potential, maybe they'll grow a bit more than Dezingle. Plus, you'll need help on D. Dezingle could potentially bring someone in. Maybe trade him to Washington for a guy like Madison Bowie, who doesn't have a bunch of trade value but would help the team in the future so our defensive core right now looks like this and it's okay it's not great but it's okay the addition of Justin Schultz is really gonna help uh, we got Joachim Ryan there Joe Mora which I kind of want to play you there because uh, I want to have the young guys play to they kind of look alike Julius Bergman and Joachim Ryan a little bit maybe not um, but I don't really want to change that up but I also don't want to play Dezingle in a place where he's not going to succeed because ever since he had that 52 point year last year he was playing on the third line got 40 points I can only imagine that he's not going to grow on the fourth line he's not going to get any better on the fourth line so maybe you're right maybe we should trade a guy like Ryan Dezingle however I don't think a guy like Nick Paul is quite ready to come up to the NHL at 73 overall so I see what you're saying 
but I don't think we have the necessary prospects in order to make that happen. Now, with all that being said, I'm not opposed to sending Ryan Dezingle away for draft picks and potentially a fourth liner, if you know what I mean. Maybe acquire a third and maybe like a 77 overall centerman out there, like someone like Jack Ross. That's not going to go through. Jack Ross effects way too good. But you understand what I'm trying to do. Maybe get a guy not like Ryan Kessler, although that would help out our cap situation, but not going to take on a guy like Ryan Kessler. Maybe a guy like Anisimov, who's got, what, he's got one year left at 4.5, so that might be a bit of a cap dump. Buffalo is a guy like Chris Wagner, who's kind of the perfect fourth line guy. Uh, probably has pretty good face-offs. What are his face-offs? Ah, eh, they're okay. 73, but it is grayed out because of Fog of War. But I would like a guy like Chris Wagner. Now, they're pretty deep down the center position, but they could play him on the wing. Uh, if I could get Chris Wagner and a pick, like that would be cool, like a third, but I don't think Ryan Dezingle has that much trade value. So we might have to just start the year with him on the fourth line. I mean, yeah, look at his trade value. It's way down here. We're going to get nothing for this guy. He's dropped so much. Maybe I should have made the trade for William Carlson when I had the chance. I, you know what? I'm going to admit I probably screwed up there. I probably should have made that deal for William Carlson because I didn't know Ryan Dezingle was going to drop so much. So that's unfortunate, actually. That sucks. Now, I'd have to go something like this where I'd play Bobby Ryan on the fourth line and put Dezingle with Brown and Andreas Janssen. But Bobby Ryan, for the contract that he has, he's actually been decent for us, 52 and 41. I mean, he does have that ginormous contract, but... A guy like Ryan Dezingle, I like him, but I don't really have a spot for him, which kind of sucks because Logan Brown really took his spot on the third line. Now, also, Jonas Corposalo, there were some questions that that maybe wasn't the greatest trade, but he's a goalie. He's an upgrade, I believe, from what we had before. I'm hoping that he can maybe grow. There's still a little bit of potential left there. Now, he's not going to be the starting goalie of the future. We have prospects. We drafted a guy like Burroughs, which is going to be awesome for the future, but I mean, it's still our biggest problem is our goaltending and our defense, so that's going to definitely have to be worked on this year if we want to even contend for a playoff spot, which I don't think we're going to. I think three years of tanking is just enough. Year four, five, six, we're going to be an elite team. So let's go here. Let's wait for Alex Hemsky to eventually sign that contract. I don't know why he's taking so long like he has any other offers. We're going to wait, and then we're going to send those guys down, and then we can get the simulation started, have a look at some prospects, all that good stuff. First period against the Bruins, and we're down one nothing. Danton Heinen scores period number two. All right, still down. Jake DeBrusque. And do we find one? We don't even get a goal. Forsbacka Carlson and Brad Marchand. We get shut out in game number one. That's... Not a great start, to be honest with you. Not super great. So once Alish Hemsky signs, come on, there you go. I was extremely happy to accept your offer. Yeah, no shit, five million bucks and you can sit on your ass for the next year. There you go. Congratulations, you just literally won the lottery. Let's go ahead and editing up our trade block here to maybe see if we can get something going on for Dezingle. And since I signed this Benstrom guy, we figured out he's a 70 overall. Well, it's fogged out, but the low elite guy could be pretty damn good for us we got him in the second round 35th overall now again it's still not super accurate but to know that he could be potentially around that as a draft pick that's pretty damn good i'm pretty pumped on that just to spice some things up here we'll see if there is any interest in bobby ryan or ryan dezingle whatsoever um i'm not actively shopping them but if uh, something comes our way maybe we'll have to entertain it so after the first month here, we're going to get all of October done and we're going to look at some of the guys in the upcoming draft as we start the year 0-3. Oh, oh boy, 0-4. Oh, oh my god. We have no real rival games coming up here. 0-5. Oh, Oh, there you go. We win two straight. Beautiful. Uh, so we're going to have a look around the NHL, have a look at our team stats, all that good stuff. We got a home and home against Colorado. We'll have a look at that. The first month I'm not super worried about. I want to wait to see the draft class. But I again, I don't think we're going to be a good team. Mark Pissick. So that helps out our 
defensive core. He's on a pretty decent contract. They just signed him in free agency. They want Korobov, who's a guy we drafted in the sixth round, who's uh, playing down in the AHL, I believe, Korobov. Or no, he's in Russia. All right, he's not even over in North America yet. So that's cool. You can see the Russian stats. That's awesome. So they want that guy who's unsigned, a third and a fourth for Mark Pissick, who's making 5.2 for the next two years. Um, yeah, it would be an upgrade, but where is he going to play? That kind of takes a job away from Nathan Beaulieu. Um, we basically... Tr We're basically... We're basically paying a fourth and swapping thirds. That's not really a bad deal. I'd have to send Nathan Beaulieu their way because that would just be a roster spot. So if I can do that and maybe I could get like a fifth back, I think that would be a pretty good trade. Mark Pissick, I mean, 5.2 for the next two years. That's a pretty decent chunk of change. And I'm not super positive on his overall, but he's definitely an upgrade. That's for sure. 100%. And basically, we're only paying a sixth and a fourth and Nathan Beaulieu, which is pretty much nothing at this point. Beaulieu's just been okay. So if we could get a fifth for this and basically just pay a fourth and the prospect who might become something, um, he's a low top six, so the chances of him becoming anything, eh. It's okay, I guess. We're getting Mark Pissick, who will definitely help out our defensive core. Looks like they're not even playing him this year, which is strange. Uh, they signed him in the offseason, and they never ended up actually playing him. So maybe something didn't work out. I don't know. We're going to send Nathan Beaulieu their way as well. Trade accepted. There you go. So we get a couple of picks. That's good. I'm happy about that. That's a pretty decent move. I'm pretty pumped on that. I think we come away as the winners in that trade. What do you guys think? Maybe we'll go ahead and send Joachim Ryan down here. Now, he's 78 overall. So, you know what? I'm pretty happy with that. We get Mark Pissick. That's a huge upgrade. And we didn't really have to pay a whole lot. I wasn't really expecting to make a move, especially for a defenseman. But I'm not going to say no to something like that. That's pretty decent. Uh, a couple of bottom feeder teams here. Colorado and Ottawa. They are 3-8-2. That's a big old ouch. It's definitely not a super exciting game. Uh, so we have eight points. Uh, look at, so we have eight points. Look at Detroit. They only have two. Oh my god. Uh, terrible start. So I want to look at the San Jose Sharks. So they're going to be a good team this year. But we do have their first round pick, which is pretty awesome. Uh, so we do want to keep an eye on them, that's for sure. But having a look at Jeff Skinner, it looks like he's a point per game. How good has he been for our team? He's been a beast. Uh, Thomas Hurdle has 10 and 11. That's awesome. That whole first line's doing great. Logan Brown, a boy. Third line center, 7 points. That's awesome. Ryan Dezingle doing pretty good there. Timo Meyer. I don't know what it is with Timo Meyer. We've given him like every chance to succeed. He's on the power play. Kind of just a slow starter. I don't know. Interesting though. Uh, and then look at Mark Pissick. He's played three games, had nothing. Our defense is struggling to get points, but I mean, Justin Schultz is a plus five. Bergman's a plus three. Ryan's a plus two. So it's really not the end of the world. All right. So Corpus Allo seems to be struggling, but uh, Andrew Hammond is one and oh. So that's good news. That handsome fella, the Hamburglar. Let's get another month done actually no wait uh, we have to look at some potential players in the draft now there's been a couple of studs obviously Jack Hughes Alexis Lafreniere oh another bang I think the other guy was named Frederick bang I think his name was and this guy is Thomas bang uh, that's awesome what a name uh, looks like Glenn Sumal, who is a big defensive defenseman, A, B, A, 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 B. Uh, potential is Mark Edward Vlasic. That's kind of cool. Now, we got to send our scouts out here now that I know who's out there. Some more style, P.K. Subban. Armit. All right, we've got to take a look at that guy. But I would love a top-end guy like Thomas Bang. Uh, we got Lucas Giordano here. I mean, I want to get our scout out here a little bit more. We really need a top-end scout sniper that's what we need um i don't know if thomas bang is a sniper but i think that's the first thing on our list should be an elite sniper so let's get one more month done i'm gonna pause the video right here send some scouts out and then i'll see you in a sec all right so i just sent our scout out i actually hired a few more scouts logan brown for two seconds get out of here jim benning not happening not today uh, there you go, got a bunch of other uh, scouts, which was good. I think we had a few spots left, so I just went ahead and I just uh, signed as many as I possibly could.
possibly could. A bunch of these guys. Welcome to Ottawa. There you go. I think I signed four in total. There you go. All right, let's get another month of simulation done. I'm going to slow sim a game against Toronto and probably New Jersey as well. Um, but it looks like Mark Pissick is helping out because we've won. We've won one, two, three, four games straight. All right, plan the parade. Let's go. Let's see if my boy Bergman can go ahead and get on the score sheet. Period number one against his old team. Zero, zero. Period number two. All right, two nothing. Jake Gardner and Vancouver Canucks legend Chris Tanev. And we score one, Jeff Skinner. But uh, we lose to the Toronto Maple Leafs. And they snap our four-game winning streak. Come on, guys. Let me have this. Let me have some sort of glimmer of hope here. But I think no matter what, big win there against the Washington Capitals and Alexander Ovechkin. But no matter what, the biggest thing on our list should be a top-end sniper in the draft. No questions. Ryan Dezingle for a second, all right? So that a second and a third. Okay, I'm going to leave this one with you guys, with my assistant GMs. Now, a lot of people ask me, how do you become an assistant GM? I've put out a tweet on Twitter. Obviously, where else do you tweet? Um, and it's uh, joining the assistant GM group. So look out for that tweet. Look at my Twitter, and uh, maybe I'll add you to the group. So is this something that we should do that leaves a giant hole on our fourth line, but we get a second and a third? So another one of San Jose's picks. Again, think about that. Or what should we we do with the whole Ryan Dezingle deal as we go up here against Matt Duchesne and 14-4-1 New Jersey Devils. Holy. First period up against the Devils. Okay, it's not Matt Duchesne, Corpus Allo. Period number two. Come on, guys. Make this one interesting. Bobby Ryan, of course, Matt Duchesne scores. And we lose again. Colin White gets the only goal of the third period for us. And that is another L. Taking L's all day, every single day. All right, let's go all the way up here to the Detroit game. We'll see how everything's doing, do a look around the NHL, and then we're going to end off this video. So Dallas Stars, uh, they're 14, 9, and 0. Oh, and, of course, we take the L. Lucas Hirsch, won a top 10 pick for Adam Larson? Ha, that's a joke. No, thank you. No, thank you. Just because you traded him for Taylor Hall doesn't mean you can offer me crappy trades. Uh, win there against the Rangers, loss against Calgary, and a big win against Florida, 6-4. to four. There's definitely hope with this team. Guys like Colin White, young guys like Lucas Hirsch. I'm hoping that Julius Bergman can become a legitimate top four guy for us. I mean, even guys like Jeff Skinner, just consistently killing it. 23 points on the year. He has been crushing the game in 25 games. This entire first line is just doing so good. It is such a good line for us. Look at Andreas Janssen, 13 points. Tied for fourth on our team with uh, Logan Brown. That's awesome. Colin White kind of struggling a little bit, but Andreas Janssen, that's awesome. I'm stoked on that. That whole third line's doing pretty good. Timo Meyer's got 12 and 25. The Zingles got nine. Brady Kachuk now up to an 81 overall. That's good news for us. Um, we're still rocking with Bobby Ryan on the fourth line. No goals from Justin Schultz, but a plus 11. I got him for an offensive defenseman, but he hasn't really put up any offense at all. Uh, one thing I want to do really quickly, have a look at the goalies real quick. Let's see what's going on here. Corpus Salo is 9-9, nine nine, so he's playing okay. Andrew Hammond is 1-6. Ouch. Come on, buddy. You're better than that. Uh, let's have a look around the NHL, and then we're going to end off this video. Kind of a short one, but I want to... I just want to kind of want to get the feel of how the year is going to start and if we're going to be Team Tank or if we're going to make a legitimate run. But I'm feeling more of Team Tank. Vasilevsky, 17-3 and three with five shutouts. Guy's a freak. Rookie skaters out there. There he is. Oh, my God. Look at this freaking guy. 80 overall. Avery Fitzmorris. Oh, my God. This guy's going to haunt me forever. Fuck, I really wish I would have offered more to get this guy. God damn. And look at Howe as well, Emilio Howe. Both these rookies just killing it. But I knew this guy was going to be good. Something deep down said Avery Fitzmorris is going to be the man. And he's leading in rookie scoring. So there you go. Emilio Howe, he's doing well over there in Florida. He's an 80, well, could be 84 overall. Uh, Alex Nylander with 20, Jack Hughes with 16, Zadinha, Yamamoto, Capocaco, he's over there in Buffalo, 91 overall, I don't think so. 
That fog of war is crazy, man. Gabe Velarde, uh, any rookie tendies out there? Let's see what's out there. Uh, Lucas Dostal, I have no idea who this guy is. He's three and seven. Nijelkovic, eight and seven. Any other rookie tendies out there? Not really. Carter Hart, Eric Comrie, five and zero to start off his NHL career, and leading the way. Phil Kessel's been doing some damage, so why not fill the thrill? Let's see. Nico Heischer, damn, thirty-seven points in twenty-four games. Radulov, Hall, Clayton Keller, Seattle Storm Bears legend Clayton Keller, uh, Philip Forsberg, and Avery Fitzmorris. So maybe Forsberg is really having a bounce back year after last year because they were god awful over there in Nashville for like no reason either. It was so weird. They had such a good team and they were just so average. So that's going to be it for this one, guys. Kind of a shorter video, I know, but uh, actually going to be late for a beer league game. So I got to end this one off. Uh, how are the San Jose Sharks doing? Ooh, 9, 12, and 6. That could be a good pick for us. I'm pumped for this draft. Let me know your thoughts. I have a few questions. Should we maybe try to make a run 10, 15, and 0? Oh? Um, I don't know. I just don't think it's really quite there. We really need a goalie, and upgrading our defense helped a little bit, but I still think we're a long way out. Anyways, thanks for watching, and I will see you guys in the next one.